Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. There was once a time in which the Mass Effect series was revered as the gold standard of story progression and character development. But that time is over. Modern releases have unseated Mass Effect and shed light on some of the most glaring issues. The worst issue of all? The protagonists. And if they don't fix them soon, Mass Effect and its developers may just be left behind. No matter where you stand on the ending of the third game or all of Andromeda, the ME series remains a solid addition to the gaming landscape of the 2000s. Players fell in love with the series' setting, characters, story, and most importantly, the choices. Yes, Bioware has always had their morality system in place, and not just in Mass Effect. Deciding everything from whether you take a drink to the literal fate of the world is in the hands of the player, and that was as appealing in the early 2000s as it is today. But while the idea is appealing, the approach is dated, and there's one huge reason why. Bioware is no longer the only big fish in the pond when it comes to choice-based story beats and character moments in games. Guerrilla's Horizon series, CD Projekt Red's Witcher games, Square Enix's Life is Strange, and obviously Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption 2 all include some very impactful player-made decisions. And in most of those examples, they do player choice better than Bioware and the Mass Effect series. Obviously, we're comparing games from the 2000s and early 2010s to more modern releases here, but Bioware invited this criticism when they released the legendary editions of the Mass Effect trilogy. Get out of here, now, before it blows. Blows? What? Run! All right. <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked. Playing through the original Mass Effect games now in a modern context does make them feel very dated. But even Bioware's modern attempts have the same problems, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So why are Mass Effect's protagonists falling short by modern standards? The answer is pretty simple. Personality. I've got nothing more to say to you. How about goodbye? Now, clearly Shepard has a personality, but that's because we gave them one. And that's kind of the problem here. From the very beginning of the first Mass Effect game, it's made clear who Shepard is. A skilled soldier who can get the job done. But that's not a personality. That's an occupation. And that distinction was made very intentional on the part of the developers. Shepard was always intended to be a blank slate. Someone the players could graft a personality onto. And they executed that perfectly. But it comes at the expense of the character on the whole. When a protagonist's entire personality is built by the individual player, they become a lot less iconic to the overall fan base and gaming culture. In an age where we've seen the likes of Arthur Morgan and Aloy maintain consistent personalities outside the game's rigid choice structures, going back to Shepard can feel pretty empty. They're dictated by player choices, but otherwise they're operating on an emotionless baseline. The first few minutes of ME1 illustrate this problem pretty succinctly. We've got Joker and Caden bantering back and forth. We see them arch their eyebrows in annoyance and shake their heads in exasperation. You get an immediate sense of who these two characters are. And then there's Shepard, looming behind Joker and Caden like a straight-faced statue until they're permitted to speak the line chosen for them by the player. Some of those lines have more personality than others, it's true, but really, all we get are vague notes of sarcasm or sincerity. Hey, everyone, this store discriminates against the poor. Depending on the performance of voice actors Mark Meir and Jennifer Hale. And the voice performances aren't bad. Jennifer Hale in particular gives it her all when she's given anything of substance to say. Uh, uh, I'm not looking for trouble. Maybe I am. Maybe you better get out of here before I find you some. But unless it's a paragon or renegade choice, Shepard is expected to deliver most lines in a pretty vague way in order to maintain emotional neutrality. You're throwing yourselves at the geth? Again? Again, this is intentional. If Shepard were to say a line angrily or sarcastically, but the player has chosen to play them as a happy and hopeful character, that breaks a lot of the immersion the game is trying to build up. But when you compare that to the way Rockstar navigates Arthur Morgan's in-game choices, the difference is obvious. Arthur is allowed to be animated and put a lot of inflection into every line he says. Buddy, you don't shut up. I'm gonna rip your head clean off your shoulders. Is that clear? 
That's because, outside of these scripted choices, he has a personality. In the later games and Legendary Editions, we do see some improvement to the quality of Shepard's animations and even some little glimpses of unprompted personality. Still, for the most part, Shepard has to remain stoic and understated in their physicality to maintain that level of immersion. This works for characters like Geralt in the Witcher series because Geralt is characterized this way, so seeing him mug his way through a cutscene with a shrug on his shoulders and very little else in the way of movement, it seems normal. But in the Mass Effect games, depending on how the player decides to characterize Shepard, this can lead to some really weird moments. Where other characters are moving around and showing emotion, Shepard stands rooted to the ground with a deadpan expression. It leaves Shepard looking like an action figure next to a bunch of real people reacting to a situation. And that idea is only reinforced by how little Shepard interacts with other characters without a choice prompt. There are so many opportunities across all the games for Shepard to add to a conversation, but they usually just let whichever characters they're on a mission with talk to themselves. Take Kasumi Goto's loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2, for example. When Shepard and Kasumi break into Donovan Hawk's vault together, Kasumi is constantly talking. She admires the art, comments on what's on display and how it makes her feel, and Shepard is silent the entire time. Why? Because there are no choice prompts for the player to click on, so Shepard isn't allowed to have a personality. Contrast that against a similar scene in Horizon Forbidden West in which Aloy visits Tilda Vandermeer and walks through Tilda's art collection. Tilda talks at length about the pieces on display, just like Kasumi and Emmy too, but Aloy responds to her. They have a conversation without any prompting from the player. And that's only possible because Aloy has been characterized outside of the choices players make for her. It ends up being a much more compelling scene because of it too, whereas the scene in Mass Effect 2 feels hollow and even a little awkward in comparison. Mass Effect 1 is definitely the worst offender here, but obviously the later games still suffer with the lack of auto-dialogue, and the lines that are there are usually stale. Shepard isn't a silent protagonist, but it sure feels like it sometimes. This all leads to Shepard feeling very secondary to the story and the characters around them. And players today have come to expect a more engaging version of the choice-altered protagonist, one that has a personality in every scene not just the ones where they have control over what the character is saying. Again, this is all retrospective, looking back at past Mass Effect games in a modern context. In their time, they were hailed as titans of the industry, but even the legendary editions simply do not hold up to current day scrutiny. And worryingly, we've seen Mass Effect attempt to modernize with Ryder in Andromeda, and we all know how that turned out. While Ryder tends to be characterized as young and inexperienced, they still lack a lot of that personality that is so charming in most modern releases with choice prompts in both their physicality and their voice lines. And the severity of the choices suffer needlessly for this. You get far fewer pure renegade-type options in Andromeda, and the game once again feels instantly dated and the protagonist comes off as boring and weak. The Mass Effect series does boast some of the strongest characters in gaming, but they aren't Shepard or Ryder. They're the squad. And again, that doesn't make the Mass Effect games bad, they're incredible pieces of work, but they're also a product of their time. As the gaming industry pushes forward toward more fleshed out protagonists with fully written, animated, and voiced personalities in addition to player choices, Bioware's once revered style is showing its age more than ever. And if Bioware doesn't update their approach to player choice in all of their games, then there's a big chance they're going to crash and burn. Luckily, there are a few ways to tackle this problem. Bioware could take a page out of the modern gaming playbook and start writing protagonists that have personalities. But does that feel right for Mass Effect? After all, the draw has always been creating your own personal protagonist. Maybe they could push the envelope more. As tech advances in the gaming space, who's to say we can't get more out of the Paragon and Renegade system? Player choices already have a drastic effect on the story of the Mass Effect games and the physical look of the protagonist, so why not also their personality? We've seen what modern games can do, and there's no telling what they may be capable of in just a few years. So what if, as a player collects Paragon and Renegade points, their character acts accordingly? They start standing in either casual or intimidating ways outside of choice-prompted cutscenes depending on where they land on the morality scale. They speak otherwise neutral lines in a friendly or gruff way. 
Their resting facial animations start going from bland nothingness to a slight smile or scowl. It's unrealistic to expect every single scene to be completely rewritten depending on how many Paragon or Renegade choices the player has made, but these tiny changes could help bridge the gap between the player's choices and the neutral protagonist. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and hey, while you're at it, make sure you like this video and subscribe to Nerdstalgic Gaming for more content like this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.